how to how to generate custom reports. There are a number of different types of reports in Paladin that you can generate, and you can do that from what I call the single push button reports using one finger, and then we have access reports, which are more of a custom report. Then we have the SQL builder. If you're a programmer, you can write SQL code, structured query language. And uh, this kind of falls in that I'm not a programmer, I'm just an Excel savvy guy kind of uh, area. So I'm excited because there's more than just what meets the eye here. There are some additional features I'm going to be mentioning that we just put out recently that will give you some more flexibility as it pertains to generating custom reports. All right, so um, joining us on the webinar my assistant is going to be Chad Klein. Many of you know Chad and have spoken with him. He's going to be responsible for recording this. He's also uh, going to address some of the questions. If you have text questions, I'm going to be busy talking, so he'll be busy typing the answers to your questions if you have any. Uh, everybody's in, in listen-only mode right now, but at the end, um, you know, if we need to, if we have a lot of questions and we need to get interactive, I'll unmute everybody. No problem at all. All right? So let's begin with slide one. Custom reports using Excel and ODBC. All right, we just need to click on the right button here. Ah, I see my problem. I'm at the last slide. I need to be at the first slide. All right, so let's try this again. Bring back my application, go to the first slide. Now we should work. And by the way, there's some red text on this title slide that shows you where the recording will be available after this webinar. www.paladinpointofsalespeltout.com slash webinars. That's plural. So let's start out with a little basic, you know, what is open database connectivity? What is ODBC? When I refer to that or when others refer to that, it makes us sound like, you know, what is it really? We need to understand this. Well, sort of. Um, but just to explain what it is, it, it basically it's a standard application programming interface, otherwise known as API, for accessing database information. All right. By using ODB statements in a program, you can access files from a number of different databases and also swap data between different databases using ODBC. In this case, we're going to be looking at Excel. It is really kind of a standard language, if you will, to ex be able to both extract and insert into databases. Now, with Paladin, what we do is we give you the full access to Paladin's ODBC connector, which means you have access to just about every field in our system. Second slide here talks about, you know, why use Excel and ODBC? Well, short and sweet, you know, it quickly will let you create a customer report. You can custom create a customer report under in under a minute using Excel and ODBC. It's it's that easy and that quick. It also enables you to get access to information in your system and export that into a column and row format. That makes it nice because now you can do batch changes to that data. So if you're able to export your inventory information or your suppliers or really any table in the Paladin system, you can make batch changes to that information very quickly. And you can format it and add calculations and formulas to it as well. Now, um, it also enables you, just using Excel, to put if, then, and where statements in there to do sorting options. There's all the number of different ways that you can uh, set the criteria up before you pull the data out. Now we're going to be talking about importing a bit as well, but right now we're just talking about exporting. We're talking about read-only access to the database. Read-only means that we can only pull information out, we can't put information in. So what information am I limited to in Paladin using ODBC? Uh, you're not limited to anything. All right, so Paladin customers can have access to just about every table in Paladin, at least all the ones that we expose in ODBC anyway. And, um, and it works, again, as a, as a read-only, so you can pull the data out. And then 
We have built a tool called the Data Viewer, which many of you are familiar with, which enables you to now take that information that you've just pulled out and turn around and dump it right back into Paladin. Now that's not available for all tables. You are limited to just two tables for the importing into Paladin for single stores. Uh, Multi-stores have a little bit, a few, a few more options, but from a single store perspective, you can only import into the inventory and customer tables. Now, this makes it nice because you can make batch changes to your inventory in a column and row format without having to go to each individual screen in Paladin and make a change. You can just push it out to a spreadsheet, add a formula, change all your prices up or down, whatever you want to do by a certain percentage, and turn around and import it right back in within minutes. Very, very powerful. You can affect literally hundreds or thousands of items in your inventory very quickly using this method. All right. But for this presentation, at least for this section of the presentation, we're going to talk about how to access the data, meaning read it, pull it out, put it into Excel. So I've got a simple kind of a one, two, three, what you do to start with. Well, the first thing you're going to do, and I'll, I'll actually be bringing up Excel and show you an example of this uh, right after we get done with this presentation. So I'll actually bring up Paladin. I want to show you a few things there, and then we'll bring up Excel and uh, show you how to, how to execute on, um, on these tables and bring that data into Excel. So the first thing is you have to have Excel. And second thing is you have to have Paladin. And normally, we set up the ODBC connector on Terminal 1. Very important to know. So first step, go to Terminal 1, bring up Excel. All right, go to File. After you file, click File, you're going to click on. So that's step number one. You can see the little circle there. And step number two, click on Data. And then you'll be prompted with this other um, uh, other uh, column here saying, uh, you know, from other sources, and then it gives you a list of all those other sources. Down below at the very bottom, there's a source called from Microsoft Query. So again, step one, file, click on data, click on from other sources, and then click on from Microsoft Query. Now, as soon as you do that, another box is going to pop up, and it's going to say choose data source. And on there, you might have a number of other data sources, but we definitely should have a Paladin one. It's asterisk Paladin as the data source. You'll just select that. Once you select that, what pops up is a list of all the tables. And then to the right of that are all the columns within those tables or fields within those tables. So on the far left-hand side here, I've got inventory as my selected table. And then I've, I've highlighted and double-clicked on inventory part number, description one, stock on hand, market cost, and unit cost. These are the items that I want to pull out. After you uh, hit the next button, so now we have, we've determined what table and what fields we want to pull out. All right, and you can do this with any table. This is really kind of cool because there's a lot of reports that we don't necessarily give you access to um, or at least make it easy to generate a report. For example, if you want to generate a supplier report or a class report or a department report, those are all done right here within Excel, and you can get those out in literally seconds. So the second thing is after you select Next, it's going to pop up and say, hey, well, now do you want to put a qualifier? Do you want to include rows where or exclude rows or you know, only if equal to or not equal to or greater than or not greater than? So these are all the things you can apply. I don't usually do any of this. I just say Next. And the last one is a sorting option. So in this case, you might want to do part number by ascending or descending. Uh, by stock on hand, it's it's all up to you. Now, these are additional sorting options that you can change once you're in Excel because Excel makes it very easy to sort the columns, as you know. All right, and then my results appear. They just appear, and that's it. That is how simple it is to bring up Excel and and pull this information out. Now, the next step in this process would be perhaps if you're doing customers and inventory, you might want to manipulate that information, turn around and, and import it right back into Paladin. Now that is possible, 
um, you are limited, and there are some caveats. Caveats being you can really mess your data up if you're not careful. So be careful. Every uh, knowledge base article that we have uh, about importing either customers or data through um, inventory, all kinds of warnings. You know, back up your data, make sure nobody else is on the system, um, you know, make sure you're doing it right, and then do it. And if it's wrong, you can undo it and start again. Perhaps, per, as long as nobody's using the system and you're not up and running live on a very busy day. So you'll need to be cognizant of that as well. All right. So I'm just going to stroll through these next couple of slides, and I'm going to bring up Excel and the Paladin system and kind of show you some of this. And I'm also going to show you some really new and cool features that we've got in Paladin. So the <clears throat> the exporting data, well, at least the generating these reports, very simple. It's all in a column or row format. But ODBC has different headers at the top. Notice along the very top hand portion of the very row one of that Excel spreadsheet, those column headers are not the same that Paladin wants to see on the importing side. So the first thing we'd have to do is change those headers if you used an export from ODBC. Now, it makes more sense to use an export from the Paladin data viewer, and I will show you that. Uh, but that already comes up in the format that it needs coming back in. So I would recommend highly that when you export data, use the data viewer exporter. When you're generating a custom report that you just want to print out, use the ODPC and Excel uh, connector. All right. Then in order to use the same data that you've pulled out of the ODPC and Excel, you need to save it as a tab delimited, delimited file. Right. Or, uh, so that's a .txt extension instead of the .lxs or .xls or .xlsx. All right. Then when you close that file, it's going to ask you, do you want to save this because you're losing all your format? And of course I want to save it. Uh, well, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. If you save it, it's going to actually turn it back into an .xls. So don't ask. Don't save it again when it prompts you the second time after you've already saved it as, as a text file. Ignore the, do you want to save it again? Because it'll write over that. All right. And then, of course, you want to validate your data you know, before you actually turn around and import it. Uh, make a backup of Paladin on Terminal 1, as I mentioned. And, um, and then last but not least, make sure that no one else is using the system when you do the import. All right. So oh, I want to go back here, because on step four, I say bonus export inventory. Well, you're probably looking at that going, what does that mean? Well, there's a backup, which actually makes a backup of your entire system, but then you can do an export of your entire inventory, just export it out into a file using the data viewer exporter, which we're going to show you momentarily. And if you do that, now you have a text file of all of your inventory. So if you have 40,000 items in your inventory, using that export inventory and just saving it as a file, a flat file, is going to give you that extra level of added protection if your backup isn't, you know, somehow fails. Um, you can always import your, your inventory back from that export inventory file. So another little tip there. All right, then we're going to go into Data Viewer. Again, it's, uh, you're going to go up to Maintain Data Viewer. And when you go into that, it gives you an option to um, import and export multiple um, types of information. In this case, if we're importing, we're just going to uh, go into import, select the file, and then set our parameters. You know, do we want to add this as active inventory, update existing items, add new items? What do we want to do? And then we can import. And then you want to validate your data. So that covers it for the actual presentation. But now we're going to get into the really good stuff. So I'm going to look at my other terminal here, bring up Excel. I'm going to show you an example to begin with. Get it over to my window here. I'm going to show you an example of how we do the ODBC extraction using Excel. Now, for some of you that have worked with Excel, you work with databases, maybe you've written some SQL programming, you're probably going, well, this is pretty basic. But it's still cool because it's quick, it's easy, and there's a 
wizard that walks you through this, which is even really nice because you don't have to write SQL. So the first step, file data, right? Then you find this one, get external data, and there's a from other sources button up here. And we go down through this column at the very bottom, it says from Microsoft Query. This is in the presentation. I just sent you, now it showed up on another screen here. But here it says, choose the data source you want. Well, I want Paladin. OK. And as I mentioned, it's going to pop up with all the different tables. So these are all the tables that you have access to in Paladin. So there's inventory. Now I can go with part number. Uh, I can go description, you know, location ID or unit of measure or department. I can get into uh, things like stock on hand. Uh, minimum order quantity, and we can look at things like uh, cost and uh, and other other bits of information here. Average cost. So I'm just going to select those items right there. So these are the fields I want: part number, description, quantity on hand or stock on hand, minimum order quantity, market cost, and average cost. And I say next. Now at this point, I could select one of these items over here and say only include it if it's not equal to, or you know, or if it's greater than, or any of that. I'm not going to set any of these parameters. I'm just going to hit the next button. Again, we can set up a sort order. We can say, well, do I want to sort it by description, ascending or descending format? Um, I really don't care. I'm not just not going to set any. It's just going to come out how it's going to come out, which in this case is probably going to be via uh, part number. But regardless. Once you bring it up in Excel, you got all kinds of sorting options. OK, so here we have uh, return data to Microsoft Excel. Yep, so I'm finished. Now it says, where do you want to put it? Well, it's kind of circling around the 1A. Yeah, I want to stick it right up there. All you do is hit OK. And now it just retrieved that information out of Paladin. It's in an Excel spreadsheet. It's my data. If I go down to the very bottom, I can see there are uh, looks like 25,157 items in my inventory. So I didn't do any parameter limitations or criteria. So it grabbed everything. Now at this point, uh, again, I can sort by anything. I can change anything. I can put formulas in here. But I just wanted to show you that this is how quick and how easy it is. Let's do another one. I'm just going to show you how easy. I'm bringing up another page. Go to data from other sources for Microsoft Query. On my other screen, it appears. We grab it. Now this time, I'm going to say, I need a class. I want to see my classes. I want the class name and ID. That's all I want. Just give me that. Boom. So there are all my classes, all my IDs. And I can sort these in any format I want, either by alphabetical or by class ID number. So these are some of the reports that you think, well, geez, why don't you have just a push button report to get class out? Well, we have it in a number of different reports that you can do through the one finger push button reports. But this enables you to just get the information that you want immediately, quickly, easily, sortable, changeable, and formatable. All right. So I'm not going to save that, and I'm not going to save this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump to Paladin, because in these last few minutes of the presentation, I want to talk about the data viewer importer exporter. All right. Now again, we do have a knowledge base article on this under importing and exporting data. Uh, so you know you can go to help. You know you can go to knowledge base, and you can search for that. Uh, maintain is where we go in data viewer. Now this is a back office function. There's a number of uh, uh, tabs in here that you can go to and see and pull out information. One of them is inventory. Now if I go to the inventory exporter, I can hit view, and I can see my active inventory. And it's going to crunch through all the 25,000, sort them, and put them right here for me in this window. So this looks just like a spreadsheet. But notice the headers at the top, those are the real headers that we need when we import the information back in through the data viewer. I can also view and pull out my obscure catalog information as well. I can also refine it to a particular, uh, particular supplier as well. I can also show my weekly totals in 52 weeks 
and include deleted items. There's just a number of things that you can do on this view. All right, so if I wanted to export this, what do I do? It's real simple. Just hit save. Just save it, type in a file name, hit save, and it's going to create it as a text file. It's not an Excel file, and you have to be very careful when you open that file. Because if you just click on it and your default happens to be Excel for .txt file formats, meaning it's just a text file, but Excel is going to try to open it, Excel does some really wonderful things and then they do some really stupid things. One is they'll drop all the zeros on the front of your part number and alternate part numbers. What's that going to do when you go to import this back in? It is not going to be pretty. Uh, it is going to um, up so nothing will actually um, scan, and that's not a good thing. All right. So I'll show you how to go through that and use the wizard to go through that process as well. And I'm going to switch to my handset here. Let's see. Can you all hear me? Are you there? Can I get a, a hand from somebody? Great, thank you. Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, my headset, I ran through that battery quick. All right, so this is where you export the information so you can determine how you want to export it. It comes in with the right headers. All right, so to import, there's an import tab. Just go to import. Now we're assuming the file's all set up. We've done our manipulation on it. We just go to load and we find our file. Right, so there's going to be a file in here that's called inventory something or other. And here's one called PO test. Now this is an XLS file. That will not come in. It has to be a TXT file extension, and that's the only way you can bring it in. So be aware of that. Here's a VLUX import file that I created. And if you select that and just say open, it's now ready to import. Uh, to import it, do you want it in your active inventory? Or you can even create another catalog, an obscure catalog. And you can either add new items or update existing items or both. So that's what you want to do when you import. After you import, check your data. Make sure it's right. As a matter of fact, check it way before that. You want to look in your file, bring it up in Excel, and make sure it's copacetic. All right, now, I mentioned that there's a couple of really cool features I want to show. All right, so one of them is right here on this screen, the data viewer. How many of you actually have an RF unit? All right, so I imagine several of you do. If you have an RF gun, that's the radio frequency gun that you walk around your store and you can scan for outs and receive product and uh, do cycle counts and set pricing and print bin tags and a number of other things. All right, this we have now put in the system where you can walk around and scan and build a purchase order, but that purchase order can just be a pending purchase order and all you're doing is scanning items that you want to play with in Excel. So what's that mean? Well, it means you can now go create a pending purchase order and one that you've scanned with the gun. You can go into Data Viewer Purchase Orders and you can go to look at your stored ones. And I have a number of stored ones in here. Here's one called RF Unit Terminal 3 Stored Today. If I click on that, it's going to show me that PO that I've stored. These are all the items in the PO. Now the information here is um, all legitimate, but it may or may not be information that you want to see. Uh, well, you can now grab the data in this pending purchase order or stored PO and export it to inventory, right? Or export it to a file as an inventory export. So just like we were doing export and save from the inventory screen, this is another way that you can identify items that you might want to manipulate in one way or another. And you can walk your store, scan those items that you want to mess with, and then go sit down to your computer, pull it up, export it to an Excel spreadsheet, manipulate it, and turn around and import it right back in. So this was a feature request of a number of people. We just put this in recently, and it's kind of cool. OK. Um, that pretty much covers 
all of that, uh, what I wanted to do is show you, I want to give you a sneak preview here, just make sure I'm on the right version. Yeah, I run like the latest and greatest super alpha, so I'm always surprised when it all works right. Let's see if I can bring up an item here. So we have, for all of you lumber and building material and yards and, and guys that do a lot of bidding uh, out there, we've got a, a new feature in here that we call the Profit Analyst. And this is just a quick preview, but you can go and if you have the proper authority, obviously you don't want cashiers doing this, but your salespeople that are pushing these big bids might want this information. So they can see what their current line is, cost, profit, and margin, and then also their full in total invoice, what it is across as well. So you can have multiple items in your in your uh, invoice and just scoot down through them, make changes to them, and uh, and you can see it in real time change right here on the profit analyst. So we've received this request many times because what are your options now to see cost? Well, if you change the price to something, let's say we'll change it to you know a dime, it's going to come up and tell you what the minimum allowable price is, protecting your margin. But it's not going to actually tell you what the cost is unless you set your minimum allowable to your cost, which I don't think you want to want to do. The other option is you know just jump over to inventory, call up that item, and you know quickly look at it and look at the pricing and, and see what it is. But now you don't have to do that anymore. So I just wanted to give you that little little sneak preview of what's coming down the pike. There's a number of other things that Paladin works on. So in closing, um, looks like we've had some questions and uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute my partner here in crime which is Chad. So Chad, you should be live. Can you speak? Chad? Charles, you hear me? There you, there you go. Now I can hear you. Yeah. Do we have any questions that we need to answer for folks? Yeah, yeah. We have um, Joe Proctor is asking, you know, how is multi-store different? Uh, he needs his credentials and all he sees is a database for Neptune. So he's in Excel. I would Chad? imagine so. Yes. Yeah. So let's. So let's, when he brings up the uh, the external data sources, that's where you're talking about here, Joe. Where you bring up Microsoft Query. Let me unmute everybody. Let's see. So <laughs> he's texting. Can... Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. He's answering you. Yeah. So is this button to unmute everybody? He has he has no mic, so we're gonna have to do it this way, I think. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's I'll fine. pass along the messages. Yeah. So if you're doing um, data, you're going to external sources, and your Microsoft query. Oh, I'm already doing this somewhere else. There it is. And you don't see that Paladin um, uh, data source on here, then you're either one not on Terminal One because we normally set that up on Terminal 1, or uh, it hasn't been set up on your system. And um, that can be the case in some cases. So Neptune is one of the servers. So should he select that of, option? Neptune is not Paladin, no. Mm -mm. It has to be the Paladin ODBC connector. It will specifically say Paladin. Okay. So do we have any other any other questions, Chad, or anything else? Um, we've got one here, but I think it would be a better addressed um, afterwards, and I don't think it's okay. going to change to the whole group. Okay. All right, so I want to mention before we sign off, there is a quick, very quick, three uh, Charles, questions. One, one more question here. We got um, just kind of a preference thing. Do you have any certain uh, versions of Excel that are better than other versions? Your oh, good, good question, good question. Yeah, you can go all the way back to 2003 with the external sources that I know of. Um, I would say 2012 or 10, and 2000, and I think it's 13 is the current one. I always use, try to use the latest. Uh, a lot of people 
get frustrated because you have to relearn a new application, but there's there's a lot of other features that you may or may not need. If you don't need the new features, just keep using your old version, and you should be able to, to find the external data sources all the way back, I know, to 2003. I'm not sure beyond before that, but at least you want to use 2003 and better. All right, so as I was mentioning, there's a quick survey that will come up at the very end of this. Only three questions. Please answer it. And um, for a copy of the presentation, you'll want to go to, and it will probably be there in the next 24 hours, the presentation that we did on Tuesday of this week is up there already, as well as a copy of the presentation. You can go and view that there. But the link is www.paladinpointofsale.com slash webinars. And that's plural, webinars. All right. And uh, the next seminar is next Tuesday, and I'm proud to say that Chad Klein, who is uh, my assistant this time, he will be taking the reins and doing a presentation on loyalty uh, programs and how you can build a stronger loyalty with your customers. Very, very informative. Uh, it'll be a great presentation. It's going to be a, probably 30, 30 to 40 minutes long. And um, I thank everybody for participating today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and cease the broadcasting. And I'm not sure when the actual survey comes up because I can't see it on my side. Uh, do we have any other questions, Chad, before we sign off? Uh, no, we're all good. OK. Well, I know there's a button on here that says stop sharing my screen. I'm going to uh, sign off, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Thanks, Carol. Contact uh, customer service if you have any questions, a knowledge base, and you'll see all of our uh, articles out there. And by the way, we've enhanced that tremendously. Go back and look at it again for the first time. All right, thanks, guys. Take care.